Coming up on the St. Paul Forum, I'm speaking with Nancy Ann Coyne about a public art exhibit, Speaking of Home. That's coming up next on the St. Paul Forum. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm Catherine Reed Day, and today I'm speaking with two guests about a public art exhibit in St. Paul called Speaking of Home. Nancy Ann Coyne, the public artist, and Lise Ackerman Frank, who is one of the uh, featured stories in this wonderful exhibit. So I want to start first by talking, uh, just having you give us a, an overview of this very ambitious, uh, very exciting project that's uh, currently up in the skyways of St. Paul. Well, thank you, Catherine. Uh, the project is the first public artwork ever in the St. Paul Skyway system. The St. Paul Skyway system is uh, the largest publicly owned Skyway system in the world. It took a number of years to pass an ordinance so that it could, in fact, uh, be allowed for uh, public art. And that ordinance was passed, actually. It's a proud day for the team, July 6, 2016. And the Speaking of Home project is about how immigrants today in Minnesota um, consider it their home. And it's based on their family photographs that they left their uh, country of origin with, opposed to myself, I'm trained as a photographer, mm -hmm. could not photograph people like Lise back in Brazil when she was a little girl. <laughs> I can't go mm -hmm. back in time. but. Um, the project is in four different bridges. Each of the bridges are at Minnesota Street and 6th and 5th Street, and they form in a square. Mm -hmm. uh, Securian Building, Alliance Building, Town Square, and then over again to the U.S. Bank. I don't think I did them exactly in order. Yeah. Now, let's just talk about what it was that you wanted to, uh, the heart of this, this, you know, where did the, the first idea come from for you? Where did you get the idea that you wanted to feature uh, stories of immigrants and in particular to use this, this method that you're using? Well, I've always been um, interested in stories of people from all over the world. Uh, I worked as a photojournalist for many years and lived abroad. So I became very interested when I first came to Minnesota what the diversity was like here because it was not always um, in, uh, on the surface, so to speak. You would see people um, from all different countries, but potentially it was in a pocketed environment or not. But I was really interested to understand who makes Minnesota their home today because I did not grow up here. Mm -hmm. And I saw these skyways because they were uh, above ground and glass as potentially a very interesting engagement form of space, imagery, and then an experience that people could have w literally walking through the images as they were. Yeah, it sounds really exciting. So I'd like to hear a little bit about what it's been like to be one of the subjects of this um, story telling. There are 58 of you, as I understand it. Uh, from, are you the only person from Brazil that's being featured? Yes, oh. I, I believe I am. Okay. Um, it's an honor to be part of this exhibition. Um, it's fascinating to see, it's really big. Um, it, it, it brings you back, you look at yourself and you realize, oh my God, I'm actually here. And they're talking about me moving here and you know. So uh, it's coming home as I am home and I look back and I see a whole different life that it's no longer there. Mm -hmm. um, it's really fun, it's nice to show my kids, um, it's nice to show my mom, so when we had the opening, I had the generations come together and see, look mom, you know, and then my kids are very proud, um, so it's, it's wonderful, That's it's great. a privilege. So you came here at what age? Oh, I came here a little bit later, I came here, I was, uh, 21. Oh. Yeah. Um, and your parents came 
with you or you came uh, on your own? No, I came by myself. You came on your own. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so this is featuring, and and you said, uh, Nancy Ann, that that you're you're trying to illustrate in part what they've left behind in this storytelling and, and then also showing some of what they've arrived, what home is here? Uh, the concept, speaking of home, is about three things. Home as language, in part. Home as a place, therefore where you're from, and now where you are. Mm -hmm. Hopefully where you are is home. That also is much of the question for people, do they feel at home in Minnesota? And then also how that photograph itself from your country of origin or where you may, as a refugee, you may have nothing and you went to a refugee camp and a photograph was taken of you there, that might be the only sort of symbol of your survival that you have. And to bring that here uh, is very powerful. And I have, um, for the last 25 years, been extremely interested in how photographs are um, both historical information, aesthetic information, and part of material culture from one place to another. So I, to use a, an architectural signature, um, urban design piece like the Skyways that is a symbol for Minnesota in many ways or the Twin Cities and then to install photographs of people that have come here and made their home. Uh, that interface to me is very important but the idea of uh, where, you, where you live and um, your relationships and then what you come to as an immigrant is uh, very important in terms of your life and how you feel safe. And I could speak more to that in sure, a moment. we can talk about that. So you talked about uh, language. It was one of the places, one of the elements in this. Um, so did you come speaking English? Did you? Um, no, no, okay. I learned English here. Um, my friends used to say that I didn't open my mouth for the first year <laughs> because I would understand, but I was so, uh, I, was, I was very terrified to say something and would be completely wrong. Um, I would. Uh, between uh, missing the bus and losing the bus, you know, if your if your Portuguese is if Portuguese is your language, losing the bus it makes sense, mm -hmm. you know. But then you have the whole world laughing at you because you don't lose a bus, you miss the bus. So um, life is full of those kind of little details uh, that makes a huge difference. Where did you uh, actually get to learn the language? Did you use any uh, programs here? Did you um, have friends? How um, did it happen for you? They have uh, English uh, classes if you want to do come to college, do college here. So you have to go through the whole process of learning the language and the grammar and all the proper in order to apply for tests. So once you pass all the tests, you're welcome. You, know, you apply for college and then move on. So. And and in this the story that Nancy Ann has helped create about you, what, what are some of the elements that they would see? There's this photograph of you at four, is that right? Uh, yeah, five or six. Five or six. Um, um, that picture represents, my father was a very poor man growing up and he became a doctor later in life. Uh, so I asked him why he loves that picture so much. Um, and he said that represents his life, you know, he built his life and he was very proud of his family. Um, and that's why I love that picture mm -hmm. as I show my kids, I do the same thing. I took them and they took pictures and it represents everything that I built here and my life here. So it's almost when full cycle in a different country. Mm -hmm. So. And you're a, you're a business owner now. I'm a business owner, yes. An artistic yeah. business owner. Yes, I love art. Um, so I have a frame shop. Um, and I spend my days basically, you know, enjoying art and meeting people. That's great. So one of the things that um, that uh, Lise told me about before I arrived was kind of the relationship, be the experience of actually seeing herself as she, you know she was looking for herself. Mm. And I thought it was a great way to maybe help uh, help bring the the you know our audience along to understanding a little bit of how. They might experience this. That there's there's multiple ways. Obviously, they can go into the skyways and experience it. But her description really was from the street um, experiencing it. So maybe you could talk about when you thought about putting this together. Mm -hmm. um, what you know, you you had several partners involved in this. Maybe you could take us through the process a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
So I was very interested in making interviews with people to get their stories about what home means, and um, then they were condensed for the exhibit, the public artwork. And obviously, because it's a skyway, how do you engage people? So there are many different kinds of perspectives. Some people are just going to be walking through and being engaged with the photographs. Some people might look at the photographs and say, oh, um, what are they about? And then they come to another access point by reading stories about each person and what home means to each person, because that's sort of the core of each interview. And then there is the word for home in each different language installed in, on overhead panels. And that's the interior experience. And then there's also vignettes that one can hear uh, on, on video, on smartphones, accessed through QR codes each person talking about their photograph now, including Lee's. <laughs> so is that strictly audio or is that a video? I, I no, sorry, it was, did I say audio or video? It's mm -hmm. video, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought I wasn't sure which one. So, mm -hmm. uh, so they can see. Mm -hmm. uh, and so where were those interviews done? They were done in their home settings? Um, in a studio. In a studio, so everything was, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to tell your story that way. You, you were talking about, um, so have you met some of these, uh, your peers, through the videos, through in person, through the event, all of the we, above? We met over the event, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and it's fascinating, it's really fun. Uh, we even talk about uh, getting us together. There's another woman, uh, she owns a restaurant, and we always talk, oh, let's all have dinner there, you know, let's all, you know. And it's interesting to be an immigrant because everybody, you are more welcome to everybody else that is different than you, you know. So to the point is, if, if you come from a different country, the more the, met, the better, you know. It's like, welcome, let's get together. Let's talk about your life in your country and how, what you do here and your, you know. So it's, it's fun, yeah. How many languages are, uh, countries are represented in the exhibit? Is it, is it 58 or is 58. it? 58. 58 countries, 58 would, languages. Mm -hmm. I would say that, um, uh, besides for one country, where peop two people consider themselves uh, basically two different nations, even though it's in one country, otherwise it's 58. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you came in to discover um, what our immigrant community was like, can you tell me some of the things that you uh, learned in this process about this immigrant community here? Um, how many cultures are represented? How many, I mean, you've, you've captured 58, are there ones you didn't capture? Um. Absolutely. I just want to go back to a question you had asked before. The other experience of the project mm -hmm. is that you can see it from the outside mm -hmm. during the day and, and at night, too. And I didn't speak to my great team uh, of uh, people that uh, keep me cool <laughs> and uh, really uh, help me put these kind of projects together. It was um, when you're working in a, a project like that it has a lot of moving parts. I worked with a great design director, Michael Haug, and also the firm archetype, and uh, the CEO, Steve Carpenter, and the VP, Jenny Cruz, and we've been working together for a number of years, um, uh, nearly more than a decade. So uh, it's a, a great collaborative work process. So they really are part of the team. Now speaking about today, the immigrant population or what I learned when I came here, I'd been a year before at Berkeley and then before that I was abroad. And I had also studied in California years before that. So I did not know that there was a Mexican population here that had been here for more than 100 years. And that was incredible for me, and also the Hmong population and the Somalian population, that there were such large communities here, that uh, the world's, excuse me, the United States' um, largest Hmong population and Somali population are based here. So it's very exciting to learn about that. And while doing this project, I wanted to research how many um, children in the public schools, uh, how many languages were spoken, and that, in many ways, that inspired me to do the project mm -hmm. because there are more than 120 languages spoken yeah. by children in the it's school system. It's just such an amazing number, isn't it? Yeah. 120 languages. I've, I've worked with people in higher education nationally and use that statistic uh, to 
try to educate people about how diverse Minnesota is. It's a very high number of mm -hmm. languages comparatively. I don't know if you, uh, you know, what you discovered about that, but many other cities don't have that high a number actually. So I, I just found that fascinating and I don't fully understand why we have so many. Did you discover why? I could only make assumptions and that might be the historical relationship to um, both uh, it being a, a state where there have been many refugees that have come here, as well as it has attracted people from South America, mm -hmm. like I said, historically, mm -hmm. um, because of the migrant labor here that was a part of the uh, culture of Minnesota at one time. And um, obviously now, with there being numerous corporations here too. People come from other countries and make their families here also. Mm -hmm. So I would say it probably has to do with several of those factors, but I haven't ac actually researched that. That's just yeah. an idea off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. and, and it is really fascinating. And coming from New York originally, that there are about 165 languages spoken by kids in the New York public school system. And so I was really interested about that here to mm -hmm. kind of understand really the demographics. And that, when I learned that, I just said, wow, that has to be really embraced and celebrated. Mm -hmm. And that was a real driver in the project from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Great. If you're just joining us, I'm speaking about a pu major public art exhibit in downtown St. Paul in the Skyways called Speaking of Home. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the outreach to the schools. There is a component, uh, there's a, a lot of depth to the project that you've done. You've got um, a curriculum for the, for the schools um, mm -hmm. that's available. What's your hope associated with that? So there's uh, online, a K to 12 lesson plan, and there's different lessons laid out uh, for uh, teachers. So if they come to the project with their students, then afterwards they can in the classroom have the opportunity to bring students uh, further into uh, the immigrant experience. Everything from talking about, I mean these are for kids, but what kind of food, what kind of, um, what language do people speak and being able to understand also their classmates and talk to them about uh, what is the word for welcome in your country or good evening? And so there's that, and then it gets more in depth, mattering the age group. I'm curious. You mentioned you have children, so have is there any chance are they in, are they school age, and would they be able to experience the curriculum or bring the curriculum into their into their classrooms? Yes, very much so. They have been uh, able to. Uh, they are uh, 11 and 14. Okay. So they're. Uh, I love how the exhibition brings you, you see the exhibition, but there's so much more to it that goes after just visiting and then there's more. So um, it, it, it keeps you curious and engaged. So it's really fun. And yeah. it's, uh, so um, do you have, are, are there school groups coming to visit? Is it, is it being programmed in that particular way or is it more that they're going to discover it, the, the educators might discover it more on their own? We're going to be doing outreach to the schools. The project has just basically gone live mm -hmm. and we started right at the beginning of the school year exactly to yeah. target uh, classes. And as well as that, the University of Minnesota has picked the project as one of its community partnerships for the year in terms of uh, academic programming and community programming, so we're very excited working with the Office of Public Engagement at the University of Minnesota on the project, too. And what, what is that going to look like for them? What, what does it mean for them to do that? I mean, um, what kinds of things do they want to promote and engage uh, people around the university with? Well, um, obviously right now, it's a very specific time in terms of the United States and the different policies uh, that our government uh, are potentially going to impose, if not have already imposed upon immigrants. And so it's, I think it's a very important time for higher education and also K-12 to education in the United States become more sensitized. So I hope to be working with numerous groups at the university, departments and centers like the Center for New Americans uh, that we can build programming around the project. 
Great. Yeah. Yeah. And so, ha were there any barriers to, um, given given the tone that you know our country is, it, things how things have turned around immigration? Um, you know, have there been other barriers besides the fact that you needed to get a city ordinance and had the physical challenges? That's a really good question. Um, I was a little uh, wary about what might happen to the project now and also that there's safety issues too in the Skyway and I'd like to even address that. Okay. Um, but I've been really uh, happy and excited walking in the space and the site and just speaking to people, so to speak, like on the street, aka mm -hmm. in the Skyway. Yeah. <laughs> and talking to them about what's your thoughts about this. So people I've also approached are people that are both um, of different ethnic backgrounds and people that may also not be that used to working or uh, engaging with different immigrant groups. And people have said, this is wonderful, this is really, um, it's very important that this is addressed right now, and I'll just say this is also for people, for lack of a better term right now, that are Caucasian have <laughs> said that, as well as people that are um, of immigrant or different ethnic backgrounds, and I think that's really important. That's one thing. And the thing to also be recognized now is very important too. I spoke while I was installing the project with a gentleman who was, um, a janitor in one of the buildings and I brought him up to the project because of his fluency in English. I wanted to show him because I, my Amharic's not good and uh, he was from Ethiopia mm -hmm. and so I brought him to one of the photographs and he was told him about that the person was from Ethiopia and he asked me can he bring his photograph in too mm -hmm. and can it be part of the project. And so I was really touched by that. And, and the impact, the importance of this project where it really turns through design and puts immigrants in the place of power mm -hmm. in, in the symbolic sense of the word over the street, that they own the city, that it's their lives um, above the people that are, so to speak, um, homegrown and sort of shifts that power balance, that's partially part of the project and the concept is to be about Im integration, but also that people that um, are involved in the project or rather engaged in the project, that they, that they recognize uh, the power of others and also the importance of other, others' cultures here in the Twin so, Cities. So um, how large is your piece, your, inst you know, your section? Uh, do you know? Um, I would just take a guess. I will say it's about nine feet by five feet. It's huge. It's the size of the whole window. Okay. It's it's overwhelming. Yeah, in I, a nice that's way. I was going to ask yeah. about. So we, you know, I'm talking about this power dynamic. Yeah. So so the the notion of owning, uh, being above the the street, um, but the scale is is. I wonder how that feels to look at this material yourself in that scale. Well, I, it's interesting because the picture is so sweet. You know, it's just a, I'm a little girl, yeah. so it, it's a, it's the shift in also it brings a lot of kindness because all the pictures are um, kind pictures. You know, it just shows we are human. We are here. You know, I ha I come from somewhere. So it's really nice that it is huge, but it's sweet, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, was, I was telling you earlier that I'm across this gentleman, and so I'm this little girl, and he, his picture is him as a little boy, and we're basically smiling at each other, you know. And I would never met him, but, you know, in any other particular way, and we just look at each other, and we start laughing to see that all, what have we done with our lives, and we're here, and so it's it's fascinating, and it's it's very sweet to see because they are big, but they're very um, welcoming. Yeah, and so it's kind of a sense of intimacy and um, maybe accessibility. 
Uh, and in that regard, you know, uh, you know, we have these two levels of experience in our cities, the up, upper and the lower. We've got, um, they're just very different experiences. Uh, what do you think that this exhibit can do for the, the city itself, for the downtown, for the community? Mm -hmm. Good question. It was a public artwork uh, and using the skyways for the first time ever, one can really test this as a litmus test. And there's been many issues about the downtown of St. Paul in terms of safety and also accessibility. And so engaging the downtown core uh, known by uh, the mayor as the dead zone uh, in conversation that my hope is to really show it as a spark for what the city can be in the future, that there can be really engaging experiences in the downtown and one can use the Skyway. I've interviewed people who have businesses and have talked about safety and they said they felt that the project made the Skyways safer. We'll actually see that if that happens. Um, and I have a vision for the Twin Cities that I think that um, leadership here could, obviously it's budgetary and numerous other things, but the accessibility of linking the sidewalks to the, the um, skyways, one could really create a whole kind of experience in the skyways where instead of them closing up at night in downtown St. Paul, you could have nightlife in them or restaurants or cafes and have this beautiful light lighted environment that you could look over the city with. And I think that it could be really an attraction for both cities that they could um, use this kind of second city, second tier aspect of the cities as a way to promote and to really uh, engage both cities. Because when people come here from other places, what they come out sometimes with is I got lost in, in this place. I, you know, I didn't know where to go and the wayfinding. And, and then the other thing is, it was just, there was no one in it after X, Y time, right? So there's all this space. There's all this real estate to do really fantastic things. And the bridges, but also even the adjoining buildings, the private property. And so I encourage really the, the city, uh, and I've been talking with them, Rebecca Noaker, about how that can continue mm -hmm. um, and this project can just be a spark. Well, one of the things we want to do is just uh, as we wrap up to just uh, help people understand that how they can find more information. It's going to be going on for a while um, till March, it sounds like, and uh, uh, there are going to be some events. So is, what's the best way for people to find out more about what you're doing? Go to www.speakingofhome.org and our Facebook site to be kept up on the project. And uh, can they interact and uh, on Facebook post their own experiences? Absolutely, on? Okay. welcome it. Yeah, so it'll be a nice opportunity for, I, su I assume there'll be some pictures from the opening of uh, people engaging and mm -hmm. uh, so that might be a great way to help us understand the impact of this really ambitious and exciting work. Very excited that you were able to do it for our city. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. That's all we have time for. Come back again next week for the St. Paul Forum. <laughs>